Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 down to 11 Ask and it shall be given you Seek and ye shall find Knock and it shall be opened unto you For every one that asketh receiveth And he that seeketh findeth And to him that knocketh it shall be opened For what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Amen. Welcome to the School of Obedience. Today we are going to be talking about persistence in prayer. God bless you. In this particular portion of teaching, Jesus is basically giving an invite into the life of prayer. He's calling us to a life of asking, seeking, and knocking. He's inviting those that would desire God to work, to live, and to move in their lives. One of the things that is rare in church today is true prayer, the life of true prayer. Persistent and continual praying and seeking after God. And this comes down to the point of faith, of really believing in God, because if God is your only hope, if God is the only source for an answer, whatever situation that you're experiencing in your life, then you will be persistent in your prayer. Now, this is the third time that Jesus has mentioned prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. And he's now emphasizing that there is answer to prayer there is meaning and purpose to it, but he commands and invites. You have to participate in the prayer life in order for you to experience the answer. So he says, ask. And I would like to emphasize there, keep on asking. Knock, keep on knocking. Seek, keep on seeking until God answers you. And many would say that he was talking mainly to his disciples at that point in time. But if he goes on in verse 8 and he says, Everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. Everyone that knocks, the door is opened. So prayer is open to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. Every follower of Jesus Christ is called to the life of prayer. But what is lacking in a lot of our prayer lives today is answered prayer. And the reason we don't have our prayers answered is because we lack persistence. We need to become the people that will say, I will pray until I hear an answer from God. Now there's something that I want to clarify very quickly before we go on here. He's not saying that everything you pray for will be answered. He's not saying as long as you ask, you're going to get whatever you're asking for. God will not give you what you ask for in prayer all the time. They are obviously conditions to the life of true prayer. Because if God asks, answers everything you ask Him and gives whatever you ask Him for, He is no longer God. You then are God and He is your servant. All you have to do is ask and He does it. And there are some things that when you were younger you asked for and now you realize are ridiculous. So it's a good thing that he does not give everything you ask for in prayer. So 
you can then ask me, but you just came from telling me that if I ask, I'll get. If I seek, I'll find. If I knock, the doors open. Sometimes the answer from God is not favorable. Sometimes it's, Lord, can I have this? Lord, I want this. And sometimes the answer is no. And you have to accept that and you have to move on. But what I'm talking about is praying until you get an answer. A lot of Christians pray and pray and pray. And their prayers are so random and and it's just praying for different things all the time and it becomes praying for the sake of tradition not because of belief anymore not because of trust and hoping God anymore it's no longer persistent hoping for an answer for a specific need and specific situation it's just every day random prayers and you know we say this today and we say that tomorrow and then we come up with all these funny tricks in, in, in our prayers, you know, you, you hear, and these are unbiblical things. You hear people saying that you have to ask God once, and then after that, you just continue giving thanks for the answer. There is no scripture for that in the Bible. There is no scripture for that in the Bible. You have to pray, and you have to let your request known to God from your heart until God gives you an answer because he is faithful. God does not need to be manipulated by your thanksgiving and your praise. Now all of a sudden because you're praising him and you prayed once, all of a sudden he, he's put in the corner and he has to answer your prayer. It does not work that way. You pray and you ask, you knock, you seek until you get a response until God tells you until God opens for you until he responds to your prayer and then after that you can thank God for his will working in your life on that note I'd like to warn you as children of God don't get caught up in doing things and and and, and practices that are unbiblical that are ungodly. Follow what the Bible says. Follow the patterns of prayer in the Bible. Persistence in prayer is important. It does not mean that if you are persisting in prayer that you lack faith. It actually means that you have true faith in God because you keep coming back to Him. You're not looking for a formula. You keep coming back to Him. You keep coming back to Him. And one day, soon, God will respond and answer to that prayer. And you need to experience that kind of prayer life. Now, in James chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, he talks about how you desire things for self-satisfaction. And then he says, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss. One of the things that you have to understand about praying for whatever you want and getting it is that it has to be in line with the will of God. You cannot pray for things so that you can show off. You can A lot of the times people read these scriptures where Jesus will say things like, Whatever you ask for in my name, I'll give it to you. We read things like that and we immediately think of our flesh. Immediately we're thinking of car, house, phones, clothes, shoes, money. And I want this and and, and big house, big pool and flashing here and flashing there. And that's what we think about immediately. But... God will not respond to those prayers. Prayers that are given to God in order for you to satisfy your flesh and to show off to people. Those prayers definitely will not be answered. You have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask amiss. So that you can waste what is given on you, on your own self. 
you have to be careful how you pray and what you ask for. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, be persistent and keep alert. You've always, when you know that what you are asking for is in line with the will of God, you must now persist in asking that and keep alert. Be aware, be watchful. You're watchful to continue in prayer. You're watchful for the answer from God. Be alert. God speaks. He's always speaking. So always be on your guard, but be persistent. In, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Now, that does not necessarily mean that 24-7 you're praying. What that means is persistent in prayer. Don't be wary in praying. If there's a need in your life and it's something that is in line with the word and the will of God, don't be wary. Pray without ceasing. Continue faithfully seeking God. In Luke chapter 18, from verse 1 to 8, there's a parable given about a widow who received injustice from the system that was present at that time. And this wicked judge refused to hear her plea and she would petition him. And wherever he was, she would go and she would petition him and cry out to him until finally he judged in her favor. And this comes to the point where Jesus says, you who are evil, if you know to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father give good things to you if you ask him? And if we take the persistent widow and we take what Jesus is saying in, in Matthew chapter 7, a child that is hungry and coming and asking for bread, please can I have bread? And you're like, no, wait, I'll get you bread. Please, I'm hungry. Please, can I have bread? Let me just finish what I'm doing and I'll get bread for you. But I'm hungry. Please, please, can I have bread? And in the irritation of you or the persistence, and you know, sometimes you just lash out and you're like, okay, fine. Here, here's the bread. You can have the bread. He's saying that if you are evil, and that word evil is basically talking about the sinfulness of man. I mean, you can look at the world and see how jacked up humanity is. But he says, if you are evil, when a child persists, you won't give them a stone when they ask for bread, a serpent if they ask for fish. How much more will your Father in heaven give good things to you if you ask him? Because he's not evil. God is full of love. So if your response to your child as somebody who's sinful, somebody who's prone to do something bad, is to give them what they are asking for in persistence, how much more will God respond to your prayer and give good things to you if you ask in persistence? There's another story that Jesus tells in a parable in Luke chapter 11 verse 5 to 13 of the friend that was begging for bread and he continued to knock and knock and beg and plead until his friend responded to him and that's one thing i want you to learn about prayer prayer and persistence go hand in hand those one-off prayers and a declaration those don't work when you are in need you come before god and you petition him with persistence until God hears you. Not disrespectfully from the heart in persistence. Crying out to a righteous God who will hear those that call on him. And I want to remind you, and this is written in the book of First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, that when you ask for anything, you must ask according to his will. Persistence is a formula for answered prayer, but it is only a formula for answered prayer when you are praying according to the will of God. So the common things that you can ask for that are written in the Bible is for the knowledge of Christ, 
to have revelation and understanding of who Christ is, is for the Holy Spirit because in telling the same thing in the book of Luke, he says, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him? We can pray for wisdom. We can pray for the mercy of God. We can pray for the provision of God. We can pray for his guidance and whatever is on your heart. But you have to be persistent in prayer. Prayer is not a tool for you to command God. Prayer is a method of you submitting your life to the will and the purpose of God. So if your situation, if what you are going through, if that area of lack in your life is something that must needs be experienced in your life for a season, and we're thinking of Job here, your persistent prayer is not to command God to all of a sudden magically bring you out of what He's allowing to happen in your life. It is to bring you to the point where you understand and subject yourself to the will of God. A lot of people, and I've heard a lot of people, some even standing behind the pulpit, underestimate the power of prayer, underestimate the effectiveness of prayer. And for me, the reason for that is because so many people have been disappointed in prayer. So they say, no, when you pray, you've got to go and do something about it. What about the things you cannot do something about? What about sickness in your body? What about things like cancer? Things like HIV? What about birth defects in children? What about those kinds of things? How do you do something about those things? You see, and that's what I want you to understand. We cannot apply a certain principle to prayer that only works in certain areas because that means that that principle is false. It's not true. You cannot say things that prayer must be accompanied by works. What are you going to do when you have somebody that is, is dying in your family? What, what can you do about that? Prayer is simply submitting yourself to the absolute will of God. And this is the part where you work upon the instruction of God. That's why you are praying, is it not? You see, for example, for example, let, let, me, let me put it this way. I'm praying for $20. I need $20 desperately. And I think, okay, I've prayed. But now I need to go and do something about it so I get the $20. So I'm out there and I'm working hard the whole day. And at the end of the day, I come and I say, Hey, thank God I got the $20 that I prayed for. That was not from God. My prayer was pointless. I should have just went out and did it on my own anyway. Because that principle does not work. Because now, just say the doctor tells me, Look, you've got cancer in the blood or whatever it is. Can I get up and go and do something about it? Now I want to stay in prayer and stay persistent in prayer. You see, so the principle has got to work on all levels. What prayer does, I repeat, is subject you to the will of God. So if I'm praying for $20, I pray until God tells me where to go and work in order for me to get that $20. That's an answer to prayer. You understand? So don't ever belittle the power of prayer and the power of God to answer your prayer by saying that after you pray, go and do something about it. Because there's things that you cannot do something about. And if you want to apply that principle on the lower level, you've also got to apply it on the higher level. And what you don't realize is when you say those things, you limit the power of God. 
because you belittle the effectiveness of prayer. I'm going to tell you this. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. It really does. But you have to believe and you have to trust in God. Now, don't, don't, don't be saying things like, oh, you were saying that we mustn't do work. We must just sit back and pray. Don't, don't say those silly things. What I'm saying, and I need you to hear me clearly on this. When you pray, wait for the answer from God and then act accordingly. Don't make up your own solution and then blame it on God. The principle of prayer is the same on all levels. If I'm praying for a dollar or if I'm praying for healing from a disease that there is no cure for in the world right now, the principle has to be the same, that I absolutely trust in God and whatever He says to me in response to my prayer, that is exactly what I am going to do. In order for you to experience the power of prayer, you have to be persistent in prayer. So one of the things that I advise people to do, get a list, write it down. There are things going down in your life. There are things you need and there are things you need spiritually from God to equip you to be a functioning saint in this world. Some of you suffer with habitual sin. Write those things down. And those are the things that you are going to persistently pray about because those are the things that bother you, that are on your heart. Somebody you're praying for to be saved. You pray every day. You pray three times a day. You pray four times a day. You pray with persistence until they are saved. You only stop interceding when a testimony comes through. Remember when Daniel was praying and he was concerned about certain things that were shown to him. He didn't pray and then start praising God for the answer. When the answer didn't come, he persisted in prayer. He even started fasting. So write them down and make sure it's things that are from your heart. And then search the scripture. Make sure the things that you are praying for and desire is in line with the will and the word of God. And from there, you pray for that. Five, six, seven times a day, every single day, until you hear from God, until he gives you an answer, until you can cancel that off and move on to the next thing. Be persistent in prayer. And when you are persistent in prayer, you will experience the true force and the true power of the life of prayer. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, drop it down in the comment section below. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. And also, if you know somebody that will benefit from this teaching, please make sure you share. That's the whole purpose of the gospel, to be shared across the world. Other than that, God bless you. And I'll see you in the next one. Amen.